hot spot on your radio. On your radio. The hottest music. All the songs you grew up with. And all your new favorite artists. All on one station. Davis uh, joining us on the phone line. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Minister Carlene Davis. Yes, Marlon. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself? Wonderful. I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah. I merely wanted to ask you about the Dripping Blood album. Uh-huh. How long did you work on this album? Well, it took about five years. We basically... No sooner we had released the previous album, True Worship, we went straight into production. We, you know, just started laying of songs that were, you know, that was the Lord was just revealing to us. Yes. Yes. And so it, it, it was a process of five years. Uh, the, the finished product kind of shows that a lot of work and a lot of thought went into uh-huh. making the, the... Say it again, say it again. The finished product shows that a lot of work and effort went into the making of the album. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, we, we, we really decided this trip, we were just going to take our time and as the Lord will show us, reveal to us, uh, we're just going to take it one step at a time and not be thinking okay, years gone, three years gone. But I, the, the amazing thing is it, it, was, it was when we were through producing and getting ready to prepare for the launch, it really yeah. Were you surprised when the album entered the Billboard reggae chart? How was my reaction, you think? Yeah, were you surprised? Um, yes and no. Um. Because you know, this was my this has been my tenth gospel album, and I guess after a while, stop looking at charts and you know that sort of um, publicity. Uh huh. The focus was really on Lord for your people. This is for the nation. This is to reach the lost. You know? Yes, yes. And so, you know, as you might know, you stop looking at all of that and say, okay, God, what, what is different about the way, you know, the way you want this to be done? Just show us how. What was it that was different this time? What, what was done differently on this album than previous albums? Well, I, I, I know that um, in terms of um, we've always been involved with, um, VP Records. Yes. They've always done our distribution. Um, this time around, they went a little further to um, align the the release with Universal Records ah. and um, and Christian bookstores in in the United States. And, and so I I ended up 
with a broader market, yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Because I was wondering what was different this time because um, you really didn't deviate from the, the content of, of, of your usual albums. You gave us a little praise and worship. My style. Yes, a little, uh, you know, balance. You know, there's balance as always on your, your albums. We have some traditional yes. praise and worship, some reggae songs and, and different, you know, type. And uh, I didn't well, see I, a deviation I, I, this time. I believe, too, it's the message of the title track, I think, speaks volume, says it all. Um, when you think of the, the, the purpose of the blood of Christ, it was shed for the world so that we can be um, receive forgiveness of sins. Because the Word of God says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Right. There is no forgiveness. And to... And there, been, there are many songs that have happened that speak of his shed blood. But I believe, you know, when God sets the time, he's the one who sets the time. Some, you know, sometimes you can't even put words um, to, 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 to answering what you just asked. Right, I just believe right. it is the timing of God and his timing of faith. Yes, because certainly. When I when I was told that the song had gone into the chart, I was like, "What?" And then you know, it went. It, when we knew of it, it was probably at eight. A couple of days later, it dropped down to, or the following week, it went to seven. Then it went to four, and next thing you know, it was at number two. Right. And it was just like shooting, 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 and I'm thinking, "Wow." Now I was saying prior to the albums. Uh, ascent into the Billboard charts. It did well on in the Caribbean market. Uh, it was number one on the South Florida and New York reggae albums chart for three weeks. Right. right Spent forty right. weeks on the South Florida albums chart. Uh, Thirty six weeks on the New York albums chart. So so it it was doing well. Is it the the alignment with the the Christian bookstores and and the the other outlets that maybe your music was not previously available in that you think um, contributed to the the Billboard entry? Well, you know, I'm thinking all all that is possible. But um, and and I think marketing, the marketing of the product with the VP records, um, going the extra mile to get it out there in the marketplace. I think all that and with the video, of course, we we have a video that accompanies that album. Yes, yes. Um, the the dripping blood video, and there's also there's a song on the album called "Thank You, Mr. Mandela." Yes, which yes. Is, which is, you know. Um, just giving God thanks for the life of this man and the great work that he did and the example he has set to bring about um, bringing nations together and bringing people together, you know, that that struggled for so long. Right. And so we, and we also had a video for that song. So I know, you know, with the online promotion and Facebook and all of that, um, it certainly has really um, stepped up the... Um, the promotion of this product. Right. Now, as far as uh, collaborations, you did a, um, there were three collaborations on the album. Uh, yes. What went into deciding who to collaborate with, uh, such as Jabez, well, uh, Naomi, it, and, uh, and Fran Fletcher? Well, you know, all three people are very, you know, close to me. We do a lot of ministry together. I mean, Tapasana and I go way back. Yes, yes. Um, my first, my first, my second gospel album, he and I have collaborated with a song called Wish I Knew Then, which right. really took off. Yes. And even in, in my earlier years, secular years, we did quite a bit of stuff because the songs had the Dial My Number, you know. Right, there was a Dial done. My Number remix, right. Right. And so we've been saying, boy, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. And he said, no problem. And we were able to pull it off, you know. Um, and that song was done, which is called Jubilee, was done in um, in 2012 as we celebrated Jamaica's 50th independence. So that song came out in 2012. So we just kept putting out um, singles right. to... Um, 
to kind of keep the keep the the, the, the the demand, you know. Yes, 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 yes. And um, then of course Jabez uh, is another um, minister out of Jamaica, who we, we do a lot of work together as well, and we felt led that you know that this song that we did together, I love to love you, Lord, would be a great opportunity for he and I to to work the song together as a as a duet. And of course, um, all about you. Um, the vo- the other vocalist on that song is my is our daughter Naomi Cowan. Right. And uh, uh, whom you've worked with um, before on one of your previous albums. Ah uh, yes, I've done a couple with her. I mean, there was my I like a um, couple albums. Redeemed. She had done the DJ part on nothing but nothing the blood. but the blood, right? And then in Rock Me Jesus, I think she also collaborated with me. I have a friend. Yes, 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 yes. And of course, yes, with this new album. And, you know, she has always worked with me on stage in her at school, into high school. She, you know, I always try to get her involved and, you know, she came full swing on this song and has really motivated her now to, to be writing her own and, we just completed two tracks with her that came out earlier this year. Which I did, uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've heard those tracks. Uh, very good work. Thank you, yes, yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, so, you know, it's been, it was really an exciting um, journey on this album. I mean, we brought on people like um, Dean Fraser. A lot of the horns that you hear on that album is with Dean Fraser. Um, and nobody greater, King of Kings. Yes. Um, um, of course, we also worked with John Williams. The, 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 that fabulous arrangement of strings that you're hearing on the title track, Dripping Blood, is our a great pianist, violinist, uh, um, brilliant. producer. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant work. And of course, we had... Um, quite a bit of our, our Jamaican singers involved on that track. The choir from Church and the Rock, praise team, along with a lot of our main studio singers, led by Andrea Hines, um, Latoya Hall, right. um, Joseph, young man called Joseph, who does love us and here in Jamaica, Jackie Ryan, and uh, some of my back vocals, um, Michelle Will, Michelle, sorry, Michelle Patterson, and um, a host of other musicians like uh, Fitzroy, Dave Green, who did work quite a few of the the um, the drums from the title track from King of Kings, uh-huh. Nobody Greater, you name it. He, he, I think he was the drummer on the majority of the tracks on this album. We have the keyboardist also as Osney Lewis, one of our main steady, hard-working keyboardists who worked with us, worked tirelessly with us on this album. Yeah, so, and of course, um, Dub Guitarist, uh, uh-huh. um, who has his own album out now. Robert Brownie, yes, I'm really the album. Yes, so, yes, yes. yes. So Danny Brown is um, nephew. nephew right. He did quite a few of the lead guitar in your hearing. And, and, and um, the was there a conscious effort to to put in a lot of extra lead guitars because uh, uh, and and the extra you instrumentation? That. Yes, it yes, it was very noticeable. Well, you're correct. You know, maybe more than any of the other products that we have done, productions we have done. I, I deliberately wanted to get that guitar because I grew up, you know, in a in a band with with a with a serious rock guitar. I always. In my earlier years living in Canada, I was in a rock band, so loud guitaring, you know, and a lot of heavy solo is really part of my background. Just love it. And now that we're giving God the glory and the praise, we just want to continue to use the, the, the stringed instrument to give him praise, you know. And I'm glad you noticed that because, you know, obviously we accomplished something there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, I was wondering. Uh, King of um, King of Glory, yeah, that one, that one, that one, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I was wondering if if that was really an attempt to to reach a broader audience than than just the Caribbean um, market. I think, 
you know, I, 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 w I was thinking about, oh, God, I want to put myself into this production of where I've been, where I'm coming from, the sound that really has motivated me through the years, you know. And um, what, what you usually find happen, you will do it live on stage, but you don't go into And I said, no, this is crazy. Whatever I'm doing, whatever happens live, I want to hear it in the studio. So we, this album is a fully um, produced with live instruments, you know? Yes, we went down that, that was song, very we, noticeable. Yes, that, that, that yes, everything was and live. we laid all the tracks, live drums, everything, live bass, live guitar, everything. We just wanted to keep it real, just as what you will see us do live, you know? Yes. The horns, everything. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, there's a, there's, a, there's a ballad called Only a Glory, yes. And right. that song I started writing, it was one of the first songs that I was writing for the album. And I, I just kept doing demos and demos and demos with Ray Hitchens, who's an excellent um, producer, guitarist. And we spent many days um, tossing back and forth with ideas, you know, and we finally came up with this awesome acoustic Beautiful. Sound. Beautiful. Yes, yes. And really was coming from, you know, my heart. Uh, you know, you're pottering around the house and just, for me, I spend a lot of time just singing. Uh, maybe singing more naturally than just playing a CD. I'll spend days, my when I'm at home, I'm just always singing, just giving praises onto God. Songs that I'm familiar with or just songs that would just flow out of my spirit. And... Uh, only Your Glory is one of those, you know, sitting by my guitar, and, and, and that song just started coming out of my spirit. And I had it on my voice note for, for many years, and then one day, you know, you're going through your your file, and I, and I heard it, and I said, oh my God, I need to do something with this song. And that's what came out of it. Uh, it's amazing sometimes to hear the stories behind the songs. I, I... And that's a great example. Yeah. You just had that sitting around yeah. and, you know, just listening back and say, I have to do something with it. That, that's a great exactly. story. Exactly. Amen. And, and the, the title track has, has quite a story. Um, written by Tommy, Tommy Cowan, my husband. And that song came out of um, a, a moment while he was having communion. And he said it happened quite a few times while he was you know, eating the bread to represent the broken body of Christ and drinking the wine to represent the shed blood. He said he literally felt the blood of Jesus just washing him. And when it happened the second time, he said, no man, I have to do something about this. And Which is how he writes a lot. You know, things will just happen spontaneously and he'll write a note or two and then it, it will just start evolving and start evolving and um, we we brought a few musicians into my, our studio at home and just started laying the demo. And then we went in down Tough Gong and then we called John Williams and said, okay, this is what we want done. We want to take it to the next level now. We, you take it and finish it off, you know. And that's what it is. And literally, when you look at the video, it, it, it's really speaking of that. You see um, an image of of a man representing Christ carrying the cross, you know, um, being beaten and battered and bruised, you know, and, and being on the cross, and the blood dripping. And, um, yeah, and then the choir, you see a choir in the cathedral, just singing and in remembrance of what he has done for us, you know. And, and, the, and the video and, kind of just, uh, you know, brings... The, the words of the song to life because you okay thank you thank you you know it kind of yes. takes it to, to a different level because you hear the song and and you kind of vision it in your mind but the production of the video mm. kind of makes it real yes 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 we my my son wrote the script and and did and did the video videography and everything did the production you know and I said, hey, I really just have to say to God be the glory because even the, the, the cover of the album. Yes, talk you to know, us about that. People have questioned why did we, you know, 
even people you know, within our circle, when we when we started putting the graphics together, were saying, "You sure you want to go there? It just seems so graphic, and you know." But I said, "But that's the reality of, that we 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 uh, Christ has experienced, and that's the reality that He has done for us. So why not tell it?" And, and I've seen the questions in online blogs, even the Jamaican newspapers. Um, you know, people were commenting, um, questioning the the reason for such a graphic uh, album cover. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, you reach a place in life where you have to be real. You have to be um, honest with yourself because if if we cannot be honest with the, the gospel of Jesus, then how are we going to? How how will the gospel be preached so that men will be drawn to Him? We have to we have to share, and sometimes the picture paints a thousand words. You know, sometimes you just have that one moment of someone seeing that photo to 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 bring them to that reality that this is what Christ did for us, for mankind, for God. So the, love the world that He gave you only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is John three sixteen reminding us. And you know, when you come to that place, then you cannot deny. Like for for, for Tommy and I. You know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. We've been out there, we've um, been in the music business, the music industry most of our lives. And you know, when God called us and we responded to the call and, you know, gave our lives to him and he now allowed us to continue to use music in a new way to to encourage, to reach the lost, to, to, to reach those who are hurting, you know. Um, when I look at the generation that, you know, the younger generation and I see what they're going through, they, you know, where they don't even... Some of them are not even aware that why they were born, you know, what they were created for. You know, I, I think about myself, I said, at least I had parents, I had grandparents who really taught us and gave us the foundation in which we, our lives are now, you know, um, standing on. Yes, yes. Um, so someone has to tell it. And why not us in this, in this season? Absolutely. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Now the song, yeah. uh, thank you, Mr. Mandela, you, you, you uh, mentioned earlier, part yeah. of the album. And uh, you have uh, paid a tribute to, to Mandela even um, when he was around, uh, when he was released uh, from prison in from 1990. Prison, exactly. You did a Welcome Home, which was... Uh, right, and, and before that, I had done a tribute to his former wife, Winnie, Winnie Mandela, Mandela, which was uh, which while was he was in house. jail. Yes, I do remember um, that. Also. Because it was her voice that we heard and, 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 and all the things that she faced because of his incarceration and the, the conditions that people of South Africa were going through because of apartheid. Right. And I remember we were, Tommy was on tour and he came home with this book that says a part of my a part of my life went with him. Something to that effect. And it was really about Winnie, Winnie's experience, you know, since her marriage and since his incarceration. And when I read that story, I was just, we were just totally crying because literally this woman never really had a chance to live a, 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 a proper um, marital life with her husband, you right. know? after 27 years in prison. Exactly, and, 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 and the atrocities that she experienced and all of that, you know, we were led to write the song, 27 years or more locked in captivity. Um, I can't, but Winnie, Winnie Mandela um, just, was just a song, just giving encouragement to her and, and those who would stand with her during that time. And then, of course, the moment he got free, he was released. We were in England working on an album, and we were led to, to put pen to paper, Tommy and I and another friend of ours, and put out that song right away. And 
that song became the theme song during his his New York tour, if you yes. remember. Because <laughs> I was in um, I was living in New York at that time. Right, when Mayor Dinkins was um mayor of New York and yeah. um we were even had Yankee a chance Stadium to be invited to to Gracie Mansion, you know, to meet with him and and of course his next move was Jamaica. He came to Jamaica with Winnie, um, Nelson Mandela and yes. uh they had a huge um welcoming for him at Jamaica National Stadium and um, there again the song Welcome Home was used to usher him into the stadium with his entourage and myself and a lot of the other artists joined me on stage as we sang that song tribute to him. And what they what he and Winnie told us is that, you know, they were so thankful that the songs that came out of Jamaica during the years of apartheid because they said these were the songs that kept them going, motivated them and even when they weren't even allowed to go out and purchase it Whatever they had in their possession, they had to quietly put it on the cassette, because in those days, it was a cassette, right? Yes. And turn it low and put their tape recorder to their ears just so that nobody would hear them. Right. Um, listening to these songs of freedom, you know? Yeah, but isn't it amazing, though, that a small island like Jamaica can have such a, a great impact? That the music that comes out of Jamaica could have such a great impact uh, on the world at large. I'm telling you, I just believe it's the compassion. I think you know, you know, you hear all kinds of things about Jamaica, but they, we're people, we're very passionate, and we're full of compassion for the less fortunate. I, I can tell you that, you know, because yeah. when you look around, even here in Jamaica, the, most people around us um, give back in their community, in their school. They're just constantly, even just to reach that one child that is um, out of school um, because the parent, you know, there's always a, someone that will make an effort. There's always an appeal on radio by somebody to say, reach out um, to this, this family that is going through with no shelter, no medication, no no money for, to pay the school fee, you know, yes, you yes. name it. Yes, um, and that and, is so true. That's something I've seen also. I mean, even I was in um, Haiti two Saturdays ago because we had a major event which is something we've been doing here in Jamaica for 12 years called Fun in the Sun. Ah, yes. And so we had Haiti Fun in the Sun two weekends ago, November 14th and um, um, it was the same thing, you know. Um, I'm at my hotel and here was a group of Jamaicans who just landed um, from New York and they're involved with a, a program called Gifts of Life where they do um, pediatric heart surgery around the world, you know, for, for different um, organizations, different charities. And they were just crying out and saying, man, please help us. We want to come to Jamaica and do the same thing, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, great. Big hearts, small we, we pray that we never, big hearts. We pray that we never stop. And, and, and that is why you find the Bob Marley did it. You know, he sang those songs of freedom. He spoke... He represented the, 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 the underprivileged, you know, through his song. Yes. Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. Marcus Garvey did it, you know? Yes, yes. yes. And, and Jamaican yeah. music, maybe more than any other music around the world, is known for championing the causes of freedom and the underprivileged. That's right. That's right. 